And good morning. We were talking yesterday about Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 through 21, where we, where we read that where our treasure is, there our heart will be also. And one of the things that happens to us is wherever we have put something of value, uh, the thing we do is that thing of value then becomes the thing we'll worry about. Um, if, you, if you stop and think about it, if I've declared something as a need in my life, if it's become a need, then if I don't have that thing, my natural response is to worry. I'm going to fret. Well, we're, we're commanded in the scripture to not let our hearts fret. And how can I do that? I have to remember that whatever it is that I need, God has promised to provide for that. In fact, the Lord Jesus Christ argued that the things that are truly needs our Heavenly Father will graciously provide. But how does He graciously provide those things? He provides them many times through means. Now, there's air out there with about 21 point something percent oxygen in it, and I've got to have it. If I'm going to live, I've got to have it. God's provided it, but I've got to breathe in order for that oxygen to come in and do something. Now, you may argue, well, we breathe and we don't think about it. That's mostly involuntary, and it may be true, but you stop breathing and watch how desperate you become for that oxygen. But the Lord has indeed provided it. He also has told us if a man won't work, that he's worse than an infidel. In other words, he is worse than someone with no faith because a man needs to work if he is going to eat. So if he won't provide for his family, he's worse than an infidel. If he won't work, he ought not eat. So God has provided a way for us to labor to receive those things which we need. Never, never begin to get into the mentality that the Lord said he's going to give me whatever I need regardless. Because that's not what the command is. The Lord is going to provide for the things that we need, but he gives us a means whereby we do those things. The Bible tells us that, uh, that how shall they hear without a preacher? So we know that the gospel's got to be preached and God has ordained that a minister of the gospel will actually do the preaching. And so we preach, people hear, and God grants repentance and faith, and folks are saved. So this is how, how we know these things work. So the assigning of needs connects to worry in a couple of ways. And the first is you will tend to worry when you have attached the vitality of your life to things that you don't actually need and things you can't actually control. So if I'm saying the fullness of my life is attached to the car that I drive, the truth is, I don't have to have a car because people prove it all over the globe that a car is not a necessary item. But yet, if my car breaks down and I go into depression and begin to fret and worry, I made a mistake. I tend to worry about things that I've ta attached the vitality of life to. Secondly, we tend to worry in the face of legitimate need the moment that we forget that our Heavenly Father this ever faithful, loving God, we forget that He is sovereign, He is wise, He is gracious, He is powerful, and He rules over all things for the sake of the church. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 23 tells us this, that, that all of these things he, He's done for the church that He loves and shed His precious blood for. And if He did not spare His Son... Will he, or if he did spare his son, will he not freely give or provide all those things that we genuinely need? Well, the answer is, of course he will. So don't allow fret to be over things that aren't genuine needs. And for those things that are genuine needs, don't forget that God has promised that he would provide those things. Possibly through the means that he has set up for us to get those things, but he is powerful enough to do that. And if he is willing to give up his son, uh, then I can assure you he'll make sure we have those things that we need.